Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. We'll be joined today by two of our customers who will actually be sharing uh, their certification journeys uh, with us. Uh, let's get started by reviewing what are the industry trends on SaaS, uh, software as a service. Then in the discussion, we'll get a little deeper into how AppStream enables you to align your businesses with those trends. After reviewing those, we'll get a little deeper into what are actual decision points and SaaS conversion steps that you have to go through uh, to truly leverage those trends. In the end, we'll recap the entire uh, content of the session and then review some resources with you that you can actually read up and review uh, after this session and use those resources to actually take actions as your next steps on uh, using AppStream and kind of sassifying your applications. Let's start at the very beginning as to why do this at all. Forrester ran a survey which showed that 81% of your customers actually expect SaaS versions of your applications. And in fact, 83% of these customers might actually not even try your applications if a SaaS version of your applications is not available. So really, really important to align with these trends because if a SaaS version of your application is not available, you actually eliminate the entry of, your, entry of the funnel of all these customers who actually could be bringing your revenue and adopting your applications. <clears throat> so we looked at what customers are expecting from you. Let's look at how businesses have actually been aligning themselves to these expectations. Over the last decade, businesses have actually been looking at their traditional business models, which actually, which have been monolithic, um, typically on-premises, and requiring large upfront capital expenditures and uh, perpetual, perpetual licensing models. And they have been looking to transform. They have been on a transformation journey to make their applications more modular based on microservices, adopting pay-as-you-go subscription models, and adopting the public cloud, moving their applications, building, building them on AWS. And this is not only for legacy applications. This is actually true for modern applications as well. And uh, this is really, really important to increase your speed to revenue and to make sure that you're actually able to increase the returns on your investments. If you keep repeating it in a manual way, it's the same amount of work when you set up your applications for a new customer. According to the IDC SaaS Path survey, which was actually run earlier this year, IDC SaaS Path survey, they ran that survey across 2,500 IT decision makers and across 19 different categories of software and applications and found that 80% of customers across all those applications are actually either already using SaaS or looking to adopt SaaS pretty quickly. So this trend is actually universal. This doesn't apply just to a niche category of applications. This is, this is universal. And fueled by these trends, IDC forecasts that in the five years ending 2026, the SaaS and cloud software revenue will actually grow by close to two and a half times. So how do you align to these trends? I think there are three things which are really, really important. You got to be able to use your applications as is. If you have a native application, you need to be able to use this as is because the entire journey of rewriting it and making it browser compatible 
might actually be a really, really long path. <clears throat> you need to be able to reach the end user where those end users are without any constraints of what is the firepower of the local device that they have. No installs, no firewalls, none of that. And the third thing is that the solution that you use needs to be modular so you can customize it and it needs to truly enable pay-as-you-go model for you. Because without that, you'll actually not be able to increase your speed to revenue and making sure that the, that the investments that you have, you keep reaping returns, of them, returns from that and you don't really have to repeat this entire process every time you are deploying applications to your customers. So we looked at what customers are expecting from you. We looked at how businesses are actually aligning to those trends. Let's look at how AppStream can enable that to actually quickly, instantly sassify your applications. <clears throat> With AppStream, you install the native version of your applications in AWS along with the data they need in one neat package. And AppStream delivers a secure pixel stream of that application to your end users via a web browser. No firewall issues, no installs needed. And the input from the end users is relayed back to the native version of the application that's actually deployed in the cloud. And this is a very, very fluid experience. Our customers tell that that this is indistinguishable from that native application running locally on their client device. Very powerful. So with AppStream, you are able to use your application as is. No rewrite, no refactoring necessary. You are able to scale your application on demand. We have a lot of regions where you can, uh, you can pick uh, the the best suited region for you to optimally deliver this experience. No need to commit to any large expenditure upfront. We give you a lot of flavors of instance types based upon the needs of your application. Standard instances, graphics instances, memory uh, optimized instances. You have a huge choice on how you customize your experience. You can apply your branding. You can embed the entire experience to make it pixel perfect for your brand. And of course, all of this is pay as you go in a fully managed package where the administrative tasks for you are actually very, very simple, irrespective of how big your deployment is. We'll get deeper into that, into all of that, uh, step by step. So we covered the basics of the application, of the AppStream service. And this actually is the geographic footprint. We are available in 13 regions, five in North America, three in Europe, and five in Asia Pacific. Many of our customers have data sovereignty needs, and that guides how they pick what region to deploy to. And if you have selected a hub of regions that you have invested in, you can go by that strategy, and many of our customers actually choose the region which is closest to them for optimal experience. The service meets you where you are, and you can leverage this geographic footprint on whatever region is suited best for you. <clears throat> we talked about the basics of the service. We talked about how it enables you to move really fast because there is no rewrite of your application involved. We talked a little bit about the geographic footprint, that this is a scale service available for your global deployments. Let's touch on a little bit on the pricing constructs. There are two components to pricing the service. The streaming costs, which actually is the infrastructure cost, all inclusive of the compute, st storage, and network traffic that your application needs in one package. There is no a la carte pricing. This is all inclusive starts starts from seven and a half cents an hour, and then based upon the configuration of your application, actually per second billing is also available to you. 
And of course, all of this is pay as, pay as you go. A lot of levers for you to control these costs, how you scale up, how you scale down, very, very modular. And the second component of the pricing is the licensing fee, which is hugely subsidized for the education use cases. And if you have pre-procured licenses, you can actually port them at no extra cost. All of these customers that you see on the screen have had successful certification journeys with AppSheen. You look at SolidWorks, which is an industry leader in CAD design. By using AppStream, they were actually able to increase the count of end users trying their application from about 1,000 a month to 21,000 a month, which is a 20x increase. Gerber, which actually deploys a CAD application for the fashion industry, were able to reduce the time to deploy an application to a new customer by 95%. And uh, IHS Market, which actually is an analytics, uh, uh, which has an analytics application, they were able to reduce the time to upgrade or release a newer version of their application from 40 hours down to one hour. Really, really good successful success stories. One of these customers, Exita, is on, st on stage with us. And please welcome Sasha Gering from Exita, who will be sharing how Exita is using AppStream for satisfying the flagship applications. Thank you very much, Gorinda. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sasha. I work as a director for Exita. And our slogan is, we deliver high tech with a heartbeat. Before I come to the part what we actually did and why with AppStream, let me very briefly introduce you to Exita so you know what we are doing and what kind of context we are moving in. OK, Exita is, uh, has its headquarter in Germany. We have about 11 locations in Germany, one in Switzerland, one in Slovakia. We have about 1,200 employees. And we drive innovation and digital transformation for a lot of big companies in, in Europe. We actually do this by delivering or building new applications from the ground up. We also extend or uh, change existing applications, rebuild, refactor it. But we also deliver standard solutions. So you say one solution, multiple customers. And last but not least, of course, we run all these applications. And these days, of course, mainly out of the cloud. We have three core industries we deliver solutions to, which is first, uh, mobility. So you might know some of the famous automotive companies from Germany. They are mostly all, all our customers. Secondly, we deliver also solutions or we consult with our specific domain knowledge in the financial service industry. And last but not least, we also have especially the standard solution in the energy and utility industry. Here we deliver solutions for commercial part of it. So we're not doing any SCADA systems for uh, you know, nuclear power plants, coal power plants. We're not doing this. We are more on the commercial side with uh, trading applications and energy logistics. We also develop opportunity markets. We are especially keen in the retail market. Um, but let's see how this develops and it's, if it will be a core business of us in the future. What's common for all of our core industries is that we really deliver 24-7 applications that are really business critical to our customers, very important for them. If they don't run, customers are going to lose a lot of money. My field in, this, in specifics is energy, where I'm working in uh, for the last 20 years. And here, for example, like I said, I can only highlight this, we deliver standard solutions. And back in the days, of course, these solutions were running on-premise. Uh, the cloud uh, was unthinkable. You know? All these energy companies are more like, I would say, laid back. or uh, They are not adapting so quickly to the cloud. Um, but uh, last but not least, of course, they also decided to go that way with us. Actually, uh, there's one client I refer to, like, um, which is quite a big oil and natural gas company. Um, these days, they're also doing power, uh, renewable energy. Um, I'm not allowed to, to tell you the name of it, 
But um, the logo is quite common to you. It can be found in 95% of the beaches of this planet. And you said shell. Uh, oh, you said shell. Um, I didn't say that. Uh, thank you very much, <laughs> lady. Um, I'm just repeating what the lady was saying. Uh, anyway, um, so this customer was actually, you know, five years ago when we came to them and say, all right, we wanted to transfer our now on-premise solution to the cloud. They say, no, it's not possible. It's business critical. It needs to be in our data centers. It needs to be close to us, managed by us. It was only about three years ago that they decided, OK, let's talk about it. Let's explore what's possible. And actually, last year, they migrated with us to the cloud. But uh, of course, all these benefits um, we would like to give to the customer. Uh, but we have quite a big solution going on with that customer. It's actually a solution family. It consists of different components. So we said, oh, we can transfer the web-based components quite quickly to the cloud. But the customer said, no, it's all or nothing. So these components, you see it on the lower hand right lower, uh, side, on the left-hand side there, three of them are actually web-based components, easy to migrate to the cloud. But three others of them are native desktop applications. So the customer said, all or nothing. Please also take the desktop applications to the cloud. We're not keen to manage half of your solution ourselves, and half of it is managed by you. We could understand that that's the problem. We were looking for a solution. AWS was actually preset as our um, uh, vendor or our infrastructure stack where we would run our SaaS solution. So we asked um, AWS, what do we have in pocket for that? And they came out of the AppStream. We tested it. We were able to run the applications within hours in AppStream, delivering our formerly native desktop applications over the browser. And then we built up the full stack end to end. It took us about three months. Might sound long, but it's quite quick because it's a lot of organizational change for us, not so much technical. So that was quite good. And when we talk about this application, it's not not very easy applications. This little movie you can see, uh, one of the applications is actually called the Exeter Energy Trader, which is a full-fledged trading application. It's like, you know, like Wall Street, with all the screens and the stuff going on. Six or eight screens for energy traders, totally normal. And having one of these applications running over AWS AppStream was, is definitely possible, no worries. So you can see, um, it's, it's capable of a lot. The other applications are, one of them is contract and capacity, where you manage a lot of contracts, as it says, and capacity is over pipelines and, and grids. And also, Exit the Forecast is doing forecasting for power and gas offtakes of industrial or non-industrial utility customers. So AppStream was really the possibility for us to bring the whole solution in the cloud, not only the web-based one, the whole solution. So what did we learn about it on the journey? Oh, we learned quite a lot. First of all, simplify the administration. Formerly, all these native desktop applications needed to be installed on the client computers. We need to install it one by one on the specific desktop machine, on the laptops, or you need to package it and roll it out to remotely to these machines. Sometimes it was also run over a network folder, which is not the best way to do it. Now, with AppStream, you install it in the cloud, and it's done for all the customers. It gets directly streamed over the browser, done. Also very capable and very good when you update or upgrade your solution. When you update it, you update it once, not every time on the client machines. Update it once on the server side, and every <coughs> customer gets the newest version right away. That's a really a lot of benefits. It also improved performance of our solutions. We often had issues with performance. Let's say a good example is um, the, on the client computer, our software is running on native desktop applications, but they have connections to the database and the cloud or in the form of data centers. Low bandwidth connection, high latency, you name it. We had it all. And of course, the, the, um, the customer satisfaction was then not, not too high, let's say. Now, 
these applications are running side by side on the server side to the database. Application performance is great now. And of course, customer satisfaction is at its highest. Also, scaling is now much easier for us. You have a new trader, set him up within minutes, he's up and running. No installation on, 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 on client computers and so on. It's just getting a new account, getting his credentials, and off he goes. Last but not least, reduce of time to market. Of course, we learned a lot of things for our solution. We can now also put it to other solutions from customers, maybe legacy solutions, and bring it to the cloud. But also, what's for me a highlight is that we are now capable, since our native desktop applications are running in the cloud, to migrate them step by step to web applications without the customer really realizing it. You can really, because it's already running in the browser. So really a lot of benefits. So to wrap up, you're thinking it's not doable to go to the cloud because of a native desktop application? It's possible. You uh, maybe have performance problems solved when you go to the cloud. And of course, scale, you want to scale? It's much easier to do that with such kind of application if you use AppStream. So we're quite happy with it. And I think we're going to have a use of it later on with other applications. Thank you very much. I would hand Thank over you. to Gorinda. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha, so much. Uh, Sasha shared how Exeter was able to move uh, really quickly with AppStream. Let's actually look a little deeper into what the sassification steps are, what decision points you need to go through. All of these decision points actually revolve around your use case, around your brand, and around your applications. And uh, you bring your knowledge around the three of those, and these steps are actually very, very simple and fast. You start by picking a fleet type. You define your use case. Do you need instant on connection? Or do you have a uh, do you have a use case where the usage patterns are actually really predictable, where instances don't need to be running all the time? You onboard your applications based upon the operating system flavor and the precise version you need, a lot of choice there. You pick the fleet instance based upon what your application needs, what kind of graphics and compute firepower does it need. You Choose the identity mechanism of your choice, and you customize the experience, apply your logo, embed it, make it pixel perfect for your brand. You launch it in your preferred region, and you scale and manage it with your preferred tools that you're already familiar with. We'll go through these steps, uh, each one of them in a little detail, so that you get, to, you get to know about these steps a little more. Picking the fleet type, there are three fleet types that we support in AppStream. Always on, on demand, and elastic fleets. Always on is for scenarios where you need instant connection. This could be for uh, the paid subscriptions for your external customers, or this could be focused on increasing your top line by giving a premium experience for the trials of your applications. The instances in this case are always running, and this is optimized for instant on connection. The second fleet type we have is an on-demand fleet type. And this is for scenarios where the usage patterns are predictable. This could be for a classroom, for a lab, or a contact center shift where the start time is, is very well known. The instances are brought online just in time and with a little weight, your end users are able to get the applications they need, and this is optimized for, for cost. And the third fleet type we have is the elastic fleet type, and it's for scenario where the utilization patterns are actually not predictable at all. And this could be for scenarios, your game days, your trainings, or 
You might have a marketing launch or a marketing event where you don't know how many of your potential customers are going to land on your applications. So this is for scenarios where the usage patterns are unpredictable. And this is optimized for minimizing your administrative tasks. You don't need to manage capacity. And for this scenario, you actually don't need to manage or create a machine image as well. You can actually package the application as a VHD. We'll get into that a little bit more. So step one of the SaaS conversion steps, you pick the fleet type. After picking the fleet type and defining your use case, you actually onboard the applications. And uh, this should be fairly quick. I mean, you know the operating system flavor the application needs and the specific versions. We support three, three versions of the Windows Server operating system. We support Amazon Linux 2, and this list is going to grow, uh, both on Windows options as well as Linux options. An important thing is you can actually not just one application. You could bundle and package your applications in a catalog um, to further optimize your costs. <clears throat> so onboarding the application, you pick the operating system, but you also pick the application source. You could be bundling this in image. And to make it really easy, we provide a complete visual guided, visually guided administrative experience on how you can create that image. It's a step-by-step -step guided flow on how you can create that image and optimize your applications within that image. For uh, Windows use cases, for Elastic Fleets, we actually also support another application source, which is a, a VHD, a virtual, virtual hard disk, where you can package your application as a completely self-sufficient package, which could be attached on the go to an instance. So you pick the fleet type on your use case. Do you, uh, you onboarded your application based upon what application source you want to have and what operating systems. Then you pick the fleet instance. AppSeam provides a lot of options. There are 34 different flavors overall on how you pick the fleet instance. And for non-graphics instances, we provide 21 options that you can pick from. And, uh, on the spectrum of price to performance, you can actually pick the exact option you need. <clears throat> so for, uh, for standard applications, um, you, get, uh, you get the choice starting with as low as a one vCPU and two gigs of memory. And this is for standard applications. You could be running SAP GUI on an instance like that. For compute optimized applications, where you need high-end processors, we, we have five choices for you. And this is for scenarios like uh, an IDE, like Eclipse, uh, a lot of, lot of computation going on. And for memory-intensive applications, we actually provide 11 different flavors. This is where you need to process a lot of data and uh, well-suited for applications like RStudio. So that was non-graphics options. You also get uh, 13 different flavors of graphics options. And uh, you have the option of uh, AMD FirePro, uh, Fire Pro chipset with graphics design, which is uh, optimized for applications. You could be running SolidWorks on instance like that. And you also get NVIDIA chipset, the Tesla M60s and T4 chips which can actually give you a full-fledged graphics workstation where you could be running applications uh, that require CUDA. Applications like Petrel can really, really be well-suited for scenarios like that. Choice and modularity, especially for graphics applications, is really important because these are really, really expensive. And if your business delivery model is traditional, where you require large upfront costs, this could be really expensive. So I'm excited to have SineWave on stage, who are actually leveraging AppStream's graphics offerings. Please welcome Adam Frisbee from SineWave, who will be sharing how SineWave is using AppStream to make Metaverse available to everyone. Welcome. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that introduction. 
So I'm going to tell you a little bit about us first um, and what we do and why we do it, because I think it sets the scene for how AppStream has been able to really transform our business. So we are a relatively old 3D virtual world company. We've been around since about 2006, so 15 years. Uh, we've got about 60 employees right now, and we're based out of London. We've been working on and trying to deliver robust browser-based 3D virtual worlds for a long time. In fact, we first did it back in 2009. However, uh, as we'll get into in the challenges section, you'll see that there is some difficulties in actually reliably delivering these experiences. And for us, AppStream has been absolutely transformative. Uh, with that said, we also are a big proponent of open standards and open source. So uh, the fact that it works uh, through browsers in a way that's quite native is, is a big win for us. So what do we do? We make a platform for 3D internet applications, uh, and that actually covers the gamut of everything. Uh, a lot of our customers working in the training space, but some of them working in things like conferences and events, uh, social environments, online entertainment and games. Uh, and many of our customers are big. Uh, we have Fortune 100 companies, we have Fortune 500 companies, uh, we have the range of people, and that often gets us into trouble with the corporate IT departments when it comes to why are we allowing you to install a 3D application on our employees' laptops. So why do we do it? Well, the basics are that uh, 3D virtual worlds enable social interaction online. And it's really one of those things that as you experience it, you begin to understand it. It's a little bit hard to communicate, but the value is all about the human interaction. When you provide a 3D environment and you allow people to walk around and wander within that in space, whether that's through a headset, a laptop, a tablet, or a phone, um, people understand that the other people in the space are real people and do begin to form the same bonds of social trust that you see uh, at a real world event without actually having to be there physically. They also allow us to simulate environments that are otherwise very difficult to do. Uh, I've got a demo in a second that is going to really exemplify that. Um, but if the scenario is difficult, expensive, or hard to reproduce, then an online environment can be a great way of doing it. Finally, spatial audio actually enables for side conversations. Uh, one of the weaknesses of online uh, events, webinars and things like that has always been that communicating with the other attendees at the conference is very difficult, but having these spatial environments and being able to wander around between them creates the side conversations that allow you to build those bonds of trust that I talked about before uh, and get to know other people as an individual level. And if something's boring to you, you can just simply wander off and, and find a new group to talk about. So this is a, a demo of a customer project. They have built a massively multiplayer online game in the most unusual location. They are bringing together students from Israel, Jordan, and Palestine to work on climate initiatives, specifically around, around the Jordan uh, River Valley and how that's being impacted by pollution and the effects of um, climate change uh, in the environment. So they're bringing these students in from locations that obviously are gonna be very difficult to bring together otherwise in order to run group classes explaining the history of the valley and how the management is going to impact it into the future. Uh, as you can see here, this is a, a simple MMO style game that the charity has set up. The charity is called EcoPeace. Um, and the entire environment, uh, one of the neat things about our platform is that the entire environment can be modified in real time. So they're able to do things like simulate the effects of climate change, reduce the uh, rate of, um, sorry, the, the depth of the river, uh, and modify how the terrain and the, the environment looks um, based on those impacts. And some of our customers use that for some of the more sophisticated training environments where you want to be able to mix something up in response to a question from a student. Uh, the trainer is able to actually go in and modify the entire environment in real time. This is, of course, quite computationally intensive and means that a lot of the tricks that games use for high quality rendering um, really get thrown out the window. So we have quite high minimum system requirements. So our B2B product, which is the platform that we provide, is called Breakroom. And it provides pretty much everything you need to set up and launch a virtual environment online, whether that's the software, the actual content itself, or the hosting services and so forth. And we actually provide those through AWS, um, and we do it as a very scalable SaaS solution. So the challenges. This is where we get really deep into the problems. Um, the first one is firewalls and IT. I already mentioned them before, but uh, corporate IT has always been our nemesis. Uh, whether it's been the fact that we need to open up firewall ports, or whether it's we need to install random software uh, as far as they're concerned on their company laptops, uh, it has always been a problem. It always takes us months to get through the corporate checklists that are required to install software locally. The next one is an even bigger problem, and that is graphics cards. 
Uh, if you're rendering any even remotely complicated 3D geometry, uh, you need to have a graphics card local to the machine. Unfortunately, most uh, corporate laptops are driven by cost rather than by performance, and that means that they often lack graphics cards entirely, and that means it's pretty much impossible to render anything remotely complicated. Finally, we also have compatibility issues, because even if those machines do exist, they might be 10 years old, they might have graphics cards, drivers, and all those kinds of problems that are very difficult to debug. So having a consistent environment, which is what AppStream provides us, is a huge win for us. Finally, the last point is accessibility. Uh, some of our customers like to do things like online events. And if you've ever tried to get 500 people uh, to install an application and get it running without issues, five minutes before the start of an event, uh, you have got a massive challenge on your hands. Being able to deliver this on the web has been absolutely transformative to us. But that's not all. We need high uptime and accessibility. Um, we have been working with a number of systems in this space for quite some time. Uh, the previous system we had, uh, we had major issues with reliability. And I have to say that AppStream has been a breath of fresh air in that regard because uh, in the previous solution, we had uptimes as high as 92%, which you probably can immediately uh, recoil from. We did too. Uh, AppStream, however, has never failed for us uh, during a customer event, and that's been fantastic. We've been able to deliver the 99.5 or higher. Um, which is an absolutely critical part of our, our service delivery. And we've never had a failure during a customer event using AppStream, which is another big win. Uh, when you're organizing a conference of 1,000 people, trying to get them to read schedule is just about impossible. So AppStream's uh, reliability here has been a huge, huge factor uh, for us and our successful use of it. Finally, the last point is that we need scale. Uh, is not many providers out there who can provide this kind of streaming service at the scale that we need. 500 to 1,000 users is pretty much bread and butter for us at this point. Uh, and there are not that many providers out there who have got 500 to 1,000 GPU-capable machines ready to go at once. AppStream does. Uh, and that's, again, another big factor for us. So AppStream, as we've been talking about, really does allow us to deliver a high-quality experience, uh, 3D rendering, low latency, uh, in the browser in a way that is very easy to integrate and customize. And I'll actually show you that in the next slides. We have actually taken the entire AppStream experience and we have uh, rebranded it. Uh, there is almost no Amazon branding on here at all. You can see our login page goes straight to our um, progress bar, which shows you the firing up of the on-demand instance. So users will typically wait there about 50 seconds or so, uh, which is actually below the two minutes that Amazon advertises. And once they've done that, they've got an experience that matches what they would have if they had installed the client locally. Uh, the quality of the rendering and so forth is broadly speaking comparable to local uh, instances. And as long as you are geographically close to the servers in question, uh, the latency is low enough that it's, uh, it's effectively also a local experience. So in conclusion for us, um, AppStream obviously it delivers quality. And that's a huge factor for us in uh, making sure that our customers can get the environments up to the standard that they expect. Uh, many of our simulation experiences will really want a high quality experience, and that means having high quality uh, GPUs and high quality CPUs available on demand that just simply aren't part of the local laptop that the user is likely accessing it on. It's accessible. If we want to give, get someone into an environment, we can send them a web link and it'll just throw them straight to a login screen in which they can go straight into the environment. There is no downloads or installs. There's no dealing with corporate IT. Um, it's expandable. So we have already uh, customized the experience extensively, as I showed on the previous slides, but we've done more than that. Uh, we've integrated our own voice over IP system to replace the one that AppStream provides. Uh, we have replaced a whole set of components and integrated them very heavily at the SDK level, which is something that not too many solutions do provide. And finally, it's reliable. Uh, reliability has been our number one concern for the last two years, and with AppStream, we've been able to solve that problem. So with that said, I'm gonna pass back to Grinja and uh, head off the stage. Thank you, Adam. Okay. <laughs> Resounding thank you to you for sharing that experience. And um, let's pick the conversation from the sassification steps we were covering earlier. We talked about picking the fleet type, we talked about onboarding applications, and we talked about picking the fleet instance where Adam shared how they're leveraging graphics instances. One of the really interesting things in Adam's uh, uh, slides was how they're able to customize the experience and make it completely their own. 
it's, it's really, really important to do that so that when you deliver the SaaS version of your applications, the experience is your brand connecting with those end users. We'll get a little deeper into what are the customization options that AppStream gives you. Uh, and then uh, the last two steps of uh, the specification process that you launch in your preferred region, and then very importantly, what are the tools and levers available to you to scale and manage your deployments worldwide? Let's get deeper into how you customize the experience on AppStream. AppStream gives you, a, gives you a lot of choice on what is the identity and authentication mechanism you want to use. If your applications require domain resources, you could have your instances domain joined. You could bring the federation and identity provider of your choice. And then if you, in, for scenarios where you have a completely custom identity mechanism of your own, you're able to seamlessly integrate with AppStream where you're able to map a user in your systems to a streaming session that's running on AppStream. AppStream is a non-persistent solution where infrastructure and instances are brought up online to serve the session and they terminate it afterwards. But there are a lot of neat things that you can do to give a continuation of experience from one session to the another for your end users. So you could be using, uh, uh, you have the choice to use settings persistence where the configuration choices and the preferences your end users have configured for your applications can actually be ported over from one session to another. We also give file persistence where the, the data, the files created by your applications can actually be stored in S3 and then picked off right from there the next time the end users log in. Uh, G Drive and OneDrive are supported too. We also provide session scripts or session hooks at the start of the session and at the end of the session. And you can actually write the code you want to plug into these session hooks. For example, at the beginning of the session, you could be using this to prepare the experience you want to download something or anything like that. And at the end of the session, you could be using these session scripts to, for example, completing any analytics uh, submissions that you want to do before the session is terminated. Based upon the needs of your application, you are able to pick how the protocol performs, the pixel protocol. Uh, you can use uh, UDP, which is a version of the transport uh, uh, mechanism or a flavor of the transport mechanism. If your applications need to prioritize frame rates, for the continuation of experience rather than the fidelity. Or if you have scenarios cross continent connections where somebody in Asia Pacific is actually trying to connect to North America, your applications or data is hosted in North America, that could be a, that could be a choice for you. Could try it out, might, might be able to land better experience with that. So lots of choice on even on the core foundational aspects of the service, uh, things like the pixel transport protocol. You can apply your branding, you can apply your logos, you can choose to embed the entire experience in your portals. And doing that, the delivery of the experience could be completely your brand connecting with your end users. And then technology, AWS, and AppStream get themselves out of the way. We support all major browsers. But for scenarios where you need a thick client or a native client as well, we support options there as well, just for a completeness of portfolio. So on launch, after uh, you customize the experience, we covered a little bit of this detail early on, that you have choice of 13 regions, whether you have data sonority needs or you have regions of choice or hub regions that you've invested in or you want to choose the nearest uh, region for optimal experience, the service meets you where you need it to be. In step six, scale and manage, which actually can be an afterthought, but it's really important 
to give a lot of choice and levers and ensure that you're able to use your preferred tools. This is, this is where AppSeam has a lot of capabilities. So whether you have a deployment of a few thousand or if you have a deployment that supports tens of thousands of users, there's a lot of capabilities in the service. The service integrates really well with the rest of AWS. You get Cloud, CloudWatch metrics, which is a time series data for managing, managing your capacity, knowing what's in use, knowing how much is provisioned at any point of time. You get deep visibility into session analytics, which basically tells you which users are using which applications at what times and for how long. And then you can use, to, you can use that to build dashboards of your own or optimize which applications are being fulfilled to which users. You also get scaling policies. You can scale up and scale down, not with any ambiguity, but based upon multiple dimensions and uh, multiple recipes that are already available to you using these scaling policies. Scale up and down as and when you need. There are scenarios where when you bundle a lot of applications in one image, you can be in scenarios where with traditional models, you need to manage so many images that it becomes very nightmarish housekeeping tasks. You could have tens or even some scenarios, hundreds of images. The AppStream service gives you entitlements. And what this means is you could still have packaged all the applications, all of your applications in one image, but with entitlements dynamically on the go, you could be having the same fleet serve different sets of your organization. You could have entitlement policies for your HR department, for your finance department, or for your developers, and all of them can be served from the same fleet in the same image, which has all the applications, but the HR department end users will only get the applications that they are mapped to, and they will not see any developer applications which they don't need. So you can only manage one image or a handful of images rather than tens or hundreds. To make sure that your deployments are consistent across the regions for compliance reasons uh, or other governance reasons, we provide image copying. And this, this actually copies the golden bits of your images in one region to another region. And you get the exact same image, the golden image prepared by your departments, your company. We provide cloud formation templates. So if you have scenarios where you are packaging your applications to be deployed to a customer, you can write all of that as code in cloud formation, and then you can quickly spin up wherever you want to and for whichever customer you want. So this is the static scenario where you have uh, built your images, you launch, and you're managing it. Now, through the course of time, when you need to adopt a new feature from AppStream, you don't necessarily need to build a new image. AppStream auto updates the software on that image for you. We provide a fully featured SDK, which you can use to build your automations. Actually, some of our customers have fully automated their end-to-end. -end. The deployments, provisioning, deprovisioning, launching for a new customer. And when you need to upgrade to newer versions of your applications, it can be a one-touch process for you where all you need is build a new image and it can be seamlessly rolled out to all your end, end users without disruption of their end user experience. Really, really important. So these are the six SaaS conversion steps we went through. And if you look a little deeper, all of them are actually around your knowledge of your application, your use case, and your business. And once you bring that knowledge, these steps are actually really, really simple and then can enable you to move really fast. You're not alone in the journey. The service is here to help you, and then we have a wide array of choices from AWS Professional Network that you could be leveraging, working with them to build your solutions. These are experts on SaaS conversion. They have been working with AWS AppStream and overall end user computing for long. In North America, you have Synchronet, CloudHesif. In Europe, you have Cambrian, Creon. In uh, Asia Pacific, you have CMD, and of course, AWS uh, Professional Services. 
a global set of partners uh, who specialize in SaaS conversion. These are uh, a set of resources that you could read up and review after this session to take action on enabling this SaaS conversion story for your applications. Uh, you have try sample applications, which is free of cost. You could use that to get a sense of what this experience would be. You have uh, customer testimonials, and you'll actually be able to resonate with a lot of stories in there and uh, maybe learn from what are the decision-making points that those customers went through. Uh, you have the Getting Started Guide, which actually does not require any prior AWS experience. It will enable you to set a couple of applications with AppStream and also enable you to perform uh, quick administration tasks to give you a sense and feel for the service. And then you have the SaaS conversion ebook, which actually is a great resource on how you can actually introduce this entire topic to your organizations and to your leadership. Uh, this is only one of the sessions on end user computing on AppStream. And if you are interested in following up with other sessions, we have uh, uh, EUC 309 later today, which is, uh, which is about how you can pick the right fleet type. It gets lit, uh, deeper into that very topic. You, have, you also have EUC 313, which will give you uh, more details on how you can get the best out of uh, AWS Elastic Fleets, AppStream Elastic Fleets. And uh, you also have a theater session, EUC001, which will help you uh, how to get the best end user experience out of AppStream. This, uh, this session catalog is, all of the session catalog is also available through that QR code. And uh, many of these sessions have multiple rooms booked. And if you are actually not able to watch it live, you can make a note. This entire content will be available uh, later on for um, on YouTube for, uh, for viewing. That's it from, uh, from me. And thank you, Sasha and Adam, for joining. And uh, thank you for your time in this room. Thank you.